Hey, this is JC and welcome to Small Brick City. In this video, we're going to have a look at this tiny Lego modular building, which is a corner build. It is tiny because it measures 8 studs wide and 32 studs deep. This is the second tiny modular building that I've done and I'm beginning to build a fondness for this particular size. The first tiny building I did was this bookstore and apartment. If you missed that video, do check out the link in the card above or in the description below. I will be showing you some updated changes based on comments made by subscribers and I'll do that at the end of the video. But for now, let's have a look at this new corner build. This is a corner building, which means it's designed to be set at the end of a corner block. And I built this based on a comment by subscriber Michael McDonough. He suggested a Lego corner build in this tiny size. At first, I thought it would not be possible just due to the proportions, but I think I've managed to do it. And I'll share with you some of my design approaches and techniques as I go along. But first, let's have a look at the building just all around. This is the site that should be against a sidewalk or a road and the main entrance to the building is right over here. The back has a corner door and a corner cutout which is a common feature for a lot of the expert modular buildings which are corner builds. This is a three-storey building and it is modular in nature in the sense that all the floors come apart and the roof can also be lifted off. As you might have guessed, the first two floors are dedicated to an ice cream parlor. And let's just focus in on the first floor and I'll also share with you some of my design details to maximize and utilize the space because it is very small. It's only eight studs wide. And in fact, in my case, it's really seven and a half studs because I did an instep of this window and the doors. Um, so I've already eaten up half a stud here. And the reason I did this was to create visual texture. In a lot of my builds and mocks, I do like to create dimension and depth within the facades and sides of the building. This just makes it more realistic and more interesting. There's more for the eyes to see instead of just one flat surface. So this is how I utilize the space. Now I needed to have space for the kitchen, the ice cream kitchen, a place to order, and yet there still needed to be space for the stairs uh, so that minifix can go up to eat. Now, this is how I plan the space. All the ordering is done from this window here. And you can actually see the money inside the windowsill. That's where you do the ordering. There's also a cash register there. And if you are dining in, you would pick up your order from this window over here. And then you would proceed to go inside and up the stairs to have your ice cream. If you're purely doing a takeout, you would order it from this counter over here. Or maybe you'd still order it there, but you'd collect it from over here. So there's this system in place that allows a lot of the action to be on the outside of the building in terms of ordering, paying, and for minifix to queue up. So it doesn't take up the space on the inside. And of course, I'll show you the interior in just a bit. But that's how I figured it out. Let's have a look at the front over here. That's the collection window. Again, I've used some inverted stoke pieces to create that extrusion out from the side of the building. I've also used jumper plates to create the half step so that window itself extends out by half a step. This window obviously is open now for business. When it's closed, it'll be closed. And I've got a nice ice cream towel over here on the side. I built this brick built giant ice cream sundae. I thought that works as a sign and the color scheme really works with the building itself. So the choice of colors for this building is deliberate. This just reminds me of an ice cream color, probably because of Buskin Robbins, but it's quite different from other buildings I've done before. And it's very different from the other tiny modeler that I did, which was my intention as well. I wanted to ensure there's a big contrast. This is the main door as I've mentioned before. And in terms of the design, I decided to have a mainly white build. I, the reason why I use a lot of white is because it's just more pleasing to the eye, I find. It's also more realistic. And for filming purposes, white comes up better than if it was to, dark, to get dark colors. And for filming purposes, it's much nicer to have a white base rather than a darker base. Especially with dark colors like dark brown or black, you get a lot of reflection and it just doesn't look so good on camera. And I did use this dark tan uh, color as a base brick color 
and this reddish brown plate just looks a bit like a chocolate i guess so fits the whole ice cream look and i've got a light gray plate in between just for visual variety it breaks up the whole plain it breaks up the whole plainness of the white wall uh, this over here is the staircase which have are built into the wall and i'll show that to you in just a bit so that's the ground floor or the exterior let's have a quick look at the exterior of the second floor it's mainly windows and i don't have any insteps here and that's mainly because of the limited space i had on the inside so to create visual variety besides using lots of windows i also use these light gray masonry bricks in between just to divide them up and i think it works really well even though it's pretty simple the top floor is a bit more complex and i really wanted something a bit different and i thought about how to design it and i did follow the concept at least of my first build in terms of i wanted the top floor to be darker and to be very distinctive from the other two floors so that it feels very separate and i'm really happy with how this turned out the front itself has different techniques used i've used different sort of bricks to create this look i do have inverted slope bricks to extend this out by one brick i've got a combination of masonry bricks headlight bricks and one by two bricks here with a snot technique to create this look there's an archway with a one by six arch piece and these pieces here are actually one by two modified log bricks placed on the side and you can get that look by putting it on the side which is a which is a very subtle but very nice technique i'll show you the roof in just a bit the sides are pretty straightforward. I use these grill window pieces and I've got these modified bricks by the side. It kind of mirrors the second floor in the way it's designed, but because it's using dark gray brick, it looks a bit different. And round the back, I didn't put a large window because I wanted uh, to differentiate the back. So I use these two small windows instead. And in fact, for the second level, I haven't shown you that as well. For the back of a single window and i replicate the awning from the side of the ground floor again just to give a sense of the back and to make it look a bit different over on this side of the wall you can see a basic design i added in some texture just to make it look a bit different just to break it up even though this side is actually never really seen uh, by an audience but i still wanted to make it look a bit pretty uh, these two look like big white flat smooth panel pieces and that's because they're big flat white panel pieces i did this for two reasons one was to give a bit of white inside the building so it just wasn't so dark and gray and the other was really just to save on bricks this does take up a lot of space so you do save on individual bricks and there you have that's the outside now let's lift off the different floors and have a look on the inside and here's a look at the ground floor if you notice this side of the wall is two studs wide and this is one stud wide and it was necessary to use uh, two studs wide here just to create the different looks and the depth the extruded counter over here and the indented windows and door over here and i think this technique does make the build overall look more interesting and different from your typical building let's have a look on this side first because it's pretty straightforward there's basically a step down from the main door, which is over here. You step in, there's a door to the kitchen and that's no entry or entry only to staff. And you can make two choices. You can go up the stairs or you can go over to this side over here so that you can exit out this back door over here. And uh, along the way in the corner, that's basically a dustbin. I built these stairs into the wall to save on space and uh, that bottom step only has uh, basically a width of two studs but that's okay that's just to create a bit more room so it doesn't just feel so tight uh, when you go around the corner there and that's because there's only a space of one and a half studs so it's a, it's a bit tight but i think this works and you can safely go up the stairs and this was designed as such for two reasons one obviously so that we can get to the second floor and the second this design here just covers the gap created by this slanted cut off so this was actually very necessary over here we have the ice cream kitchen i've got two mini figs inside let's have a look at them 
through here first. You have one guy manning the counter and we have the ice cream chef over there preparing the different desserts. Let's just pull out the minifig. Got one chap over here in uniform and the ice cream chef himself looks more professional with a nicer uniform and apron and he's adding some whipped cream to I guess an ice cream sundae. Over here, it's a bit tough to see, but that's basically the ice cream, not the counter, but basically the freezer or storage for the ice cream where ice cream is being scooped up. There are a row of cones, or there is a row of cones above it. And by the side, that's actually chocolate sauce and whipped cream. Over here, we have the counter. That's the cash register I talked about, money on the counter. And basically, these are different toppings that uh, the chef would use to sprinkle over sundaes. And here we have ice cream which has already been uh, ordered and has been produced and just waiting for people to collect. And here's a look from this side over here to uh, pick up the ice cream from the counter. And that's basically it for the first floor. Let's go up to the second floor. This is the second floor and I've tried to utilize the space as best as I can and use it as efficiently as I can. Minifigs come up over here from the stairs below. There's some wall decoration that fits this ice cream parlor. And over here, you have just enough space to come about. Now, just to create a difference in terms of the look, I didn't put another set of steps for two reasons. One was for space and one was just to make it look different from the previous building. So to get to the next floor, you actually have to come up uh, this ladder over here. A bit inconvenient, but at least there's excess. I put in this small railing over here and that's just so that minifigs would not fall down to their deaths. Uh, if they were to walk past and maybe slip on some ice cream and just fall down the stairs. So there's a white safety barrier over here. On this side, we have a really tiny toilet because we all know if you want to get a good Yelp review, your ice cream parlor must have a toilet. And I've got a tiny toilet over here. It's just a toilet bowl, which you can see from here and from the top over here. And there's even some water inside that toilet bowl. And around the corner from the toilet, there is a sink so that you can wash your hands. And then we come to the eating area proper. It is pretty tiny. There are only two booths. I didn't put any studs on the seats. I can easily do that. But basically, I'm having some ice cream. That's me over there. And Annie's having a sundae. So let's remove this so that you can have a look inside. It's basically just two booths. There are four chairs and two tables. Pretty simple in design. And that's basically it. We have quite a lot of things going on in this tiny floor. We've got booths for eating, we've got a sink, we've got a toilet, a safety railing, ladder to go up, and of course some wall decoration just to top it all off. This is the top floor and let's have a look at the roof first. I'm pretty happy with the design of the roof, especially the front and the back. I've used one by two gray bricks. Uh, these are sloped bricks and I've staggered them so that the alternating bricks are on the inside by one stud. And I've topped off the back row with a one by four curved tile piece. And I think that really works really well and signifies it's the front. Behind this part of the roof, we have a skylight. It doesn't open. It just uses uh, two by two windows and a brick to get the proportions right. And it's just to allow light to get into the top floor. There's a large air conditioning compressor unit over here. And the back design of the roof is the same as the front. I just didn't put the curved slope tile piece because it's the back and I felt it wasn't needed. Just like any modular building, the roof can come off just like that. Oh, I didn't talk about the concept of this top floor. It's actually a pastry school and a pastry chef is conducting a class in this uh, kitchen layout school. And that's why you see the layout with identical uh, kitchen counters across the entire row. And let's have a look at the students in this class. And of course, some familiar faces. Right in front, we have the teacher's pet, Brick Bakery. He's learning some new pastry. Behind him, we have Brick of Gallum. And behind her, we have Blockhead UK. All of them are really excited to take the class. Let me take out the minifigs first. 
so that you can have a clearer look on the inside. And all of them are held in place by one by two jumper plates. This particular chef is the gourmet chef from the Collector Minifix Series 17. I really do like uh, this particular look and print, probably because of that tilted chef's hat and the overall look of the uniform. So I do think this really works well for this particular model of building. And she's the only one with a whisk because she thinks professionals need professional equipment, but amateurs, they can just use their hands. And let's have a look at the inside of this classroom. Uh, nothing on the wall except the clock, but there are multiple copies, identical copies of this setup here. There's a kitchen counter, there's a small oven and a small stove top so that they can make sauces. And we've got some muffins and pastries on each side uh, ready to learn. And that's identical for each side and I staggered them so that basically the students can have a clear view of the teacher and vice versa. Pretty straightforward but a very logical layout. On this side over here, there's a really small space but I put in a shelf. Let me see if I can pull it up because it's just uh, using jumper plates. And instead of creating a wall, I use this shelf system which holds all kind of uh, bakery equipment and accessories and different sauces and such. I didn't pull it out all the way. Let me get that out. That's that's the right way, although a stud didn't come out. Uh, but there you have a simple shelf system with different things. There's even a timer. And this takes the place of a wall. So it's functional yet ensures that minifigs do not fall down. Over here, we have an industrial size sink. Pretty hard to see. Let me try to get that in there. Yep. So that's the sink uh, to wash all the pots and pans. And here we've just got some supplies on the ledge at the back of the stairs. Don't ask me how they reach to get those supplies. I have absolutely no idea. I hope you enjoyed this look at the ice cream parlor and the pastry school in this tiny corner modeler building. In a bit, I'll show you how this building looks like when it's set against other modeler buildings. But first, I'd like to show you some updates on this bookstore and apartment. I made two changes to the exterior and the first is to the book sign. Subscriber Jopi Hagel, he mentioned that the book sign should be slanted or tilted back slightly and that is what I've done. I've changed the connection method so that the book sign can now be slanted back slightly and I do agree that it looks better. The second change I did was to change the front door. Subscriber Michael Thorne felt that the yellow door stood out a bit too much and I do agree because I did go through many different doors when I first designed this particular build. At one point, I did put in this glass door but I felt it looked a bit too modern. But now, upon reflection, I do think it's possible that it could be a newly replaced door since this is a place of business after all, so it's okay for the bottom floor to look like it's welcoming. So therefore, I've changed it to the glass door with this doorknob. The only change I did to the interior was to the third floor and that's to the toilet and shower area. Several subscribers did mention that there should be some kind of door for privacy or to keep the water from splashing everywhere during a shower. Subscriber Victor Mekinko, I hope I got that right because Russian is only my ninth language. He suggested a shower curtain rod with a shower curtain and Lego Lamaniac echoed his sentiments. And I do agree, and it was a simple fix to change two of the top round cone pieces. Or in this case, I've now changed them to white round bricks. And the top basically are modified bricks, and there is a bar or antenna piece running across with this mini thick cape piece. And now we do have a shower curtain, which can be drawn aside if needed for privacy and to keep the water in during showers. Thanks to everyone who gave great suggestions to improve this build. If you've got improvements or suggestions for the tiny corner modeler, do let me know as well. And here we have a look at how the two buildings look like when they're set together. That's pretty nice. Even from the back, it's logical because the back door of this corner building does lead out to the backyard and this back alley or road, depending on where you set it in your Lego city. And remember, the total width for these two buildings together is only 16 studs wide, and that's half a modular building. And I think there's much more detail and it looks 
even nicer than some of the full expert modeler buildings. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now let's make this to a 32 stud base plate by adding in one more build inside and I've just the mock for that. I have a townhouse mock which is 16 studs wide and I felt that if I place this in between we create that 32 stud wide base plate. This is my A Falls townhouse. A Falls of course being the adult fan of Lego. If you missed out on that video you can check out the dedicated video in the link in the card above or in the description below. So if we set this in between we now get a full 32 stud wide space or footprint and that's equivalent to a standard expert modeler building and even from the front facade I think this works really well and if we're to turn it around to look at the back even though the pavement or back pavement uh, for the townhouse is different it still works in my opinion and this will fit perfectly if you like into a lego city uh, all three can be placed together to, to fit up one space or you could split them up and use these tiny modelers as buffers as i intend to do but this was just to give you an idea of how the tiny modelers will look like if they're to be placed with another modeler building now it is my intention to create digital building plans and instructions for all these builds and hopefully we'll have that available in the months to come I hope you enjoyed this video and the look at my tiny modular buildings and mocks. I also hope you enjoyed my thought process and basically my approach when it comes to designing and thinking about putting these mocks together in a custom Lego city. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can get updates on similar content that I produce. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.